Hello everyone, welcome back. For this video, we're going to look at uh, the conceptual framework. So again, uh, those of you who are listening to uh, the videos that I have made in uh, YouTube are uh, basically the ones who are undergraduate students or senior high school students who are writing their thesis or their uh, undergraduate research. So one of the important uh, aspects or parts of the research study is the conceptual framework. So this video will be about that. We'll try to answer what is a conceptual framework, what is its importance, and how do you prepare one? Okay, if you're ready, then uh, take down notes and uh, uh, listen to the different steps that I will be mentioning throughout the video. Here in this slide, I actually put uh, and simplified the steps in creating uh, your conceptual framework. You have, uh, you can see here, five steps that are uh, easy to follow. And right now, I'm doing this, um, this video after I have given my own research class uh, a research break to conduct their review of literature. So most of my students are currently in this area at the moment. Okay, so uh, for several weeks now, they have been uh, uh, deciding and reading and uh, uh, background reading on possible topics. And dapat by now, you already have chosen your uh, topic of interest. So uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have uh, done uh, how to state your research problem and how to create your research objectives. So that is actually the first step in creating your conceptual framework. So identify a problem and form a, re a research or thesis statement. So the research question is an essential part of your conceptual framework. In this part, the researcher should know that there are so many aspects of the world that you can study. But right now you have already or should have already chosen what it is that you want to write for your undergraduate thesis. Also, most probably your thesis is time bound since uh, you are trying to make it to graduation on time. So deciding your thesis problem and deciding your thesis topic should be already uh, uh, done by now. So as such, one should choose a topic that they consider to be comprehensively achieved within the resources uh, that they have and within the allotted time. Okay, so in this case, uh, you have already considered all the important uh, uh, considerations in choosing a research topic. Now we move on to establishing the research questions. So there is a whole video on that and you can uh, look into uh, my playlist on how to, uh, how to draft your research questions. But basically, I always mention to uh, my students that the easiest way to go about thesis writing for uh, new researchers like uh, you are uh, is to determine a topic that have an argument or has an argument. Uh, there's so much to study, but then if you find that one thesis topic that there, that there is uh, arguably several sides of the coin, then you are on the right track. The exact aspects of who, what, where, how, and why have to be clearly laid out at this point, okay? This is where one of the most important aspects of your conceptual framework will come in. So after you have determined all of that, you have stated your research problem, you have created your research questions, now it's the time to do a review of literature. Okay, so the things that you have to consider when you're reviewing literature, also there is a whole video, several series of videos that I created on reviewing literature. But these are the three main things that you need to remember when you're doing the review of literature. First, the literatures uh, that you have gathered should be connected to the topic. That is very, very critical and quite uh, challenging to do so. Synthesize the results of the publications you have read. In this part, I uh, included a lecture on, on how to annotate bibliography and how to summarize and put in the, the methods used, the concepts and the theories that were presented by the author and how they relate to other studies. Okay, so if you want to see a video of that, I think I have, I have uh, one that you can, you can tap into later on. And then of course, during your review of literature, 
this is a very important thing to consider. Recognize the research gaps. Find out what is lacking, what is missing from uh, the literature or the studies that have been made on the topic, and there is where your research comes in. Now that you have stated your problem, you have made your uh, research questions, you have done your review of literature, the next step that you should do, you should do is isolate and generate your framework. Isolate the variables. Isolate the important variables of your study. So if this is a uh, cause and effect, a correlational study, what are the important variables uh, that are present? If this is an expo exploratory or expository study, you have to determine uh, what are the important variables that are being discussed and you want to discuss in your own paper. Then the next thing is create a visual diagram. So most of the thesis that you have come across with, for sure you have seen these diagrams uh, around the uh, first quarter or first uh, one fourth of the, uh, of the thesis. And in the diagrams, of course, you use, you use shapes. We normally use rectangles or circles and arrows to denote relationships. And then once you have created your diagram, explain the interrelationship of each of the variables. Now, moving on, we have three common styles of writing the framework. Some uh, of the uh, past experiences I've had uh, doing the uh, thesis defense was uh, sometimes there are panelists who do not want to see an IPO. Why are they seeing an IPO? I'm used to, use, uh, to using IVDV or independent variable and the dependent variable. And then sometimes you see a very complex diagram and those are concept maps. Actually, there are three of the most common ones and whichever you want to use would depend on your paper and the focus of your study. So let's start with the IV or the IVDV. The IVDV uh, framework uh, style goes like this. You have to determine which ones are your dependent and independent variables. So basically cause and effect. So the dependent variable by the term itself uh, changes uh, because of the changes in the independent variable. So the independent variable, they are standalone variables. Uh, they are the ones that affects the dependent variable. So here in this diagram, you can see uh, several uh, four boxes here. Which do you think is the dependent and which do you think is the independent variable? Okay. If you say that the effective teams is the dependent variable, then you are correct. And the independent variables in this case are good time management, role clarity, and growth mindset. Basically, if you look at this, this diagram, you should have an idea already that this thesis or this study is about factors that contribute to effective teams. So what could be uh, factors that can create uh, good, uh, happy teams in an organization? And based from my review of literature, I saw that good time management makes teams happy, role clarity makes teams happy, and a growth mindset makes teams happy. So I want to prove, I want to find out whether these three variables truly affect uh, creation of effective teams. So if you follow the uh, one to five steps that I have just uh, put in earlier in creating a conceptual framework using the IVDV format, then this is an example of that. You can screenshot it and you can follow how I created uh, a, a quick rundown of the conceptual framework just following the steps. First, choosing the topic. Of course, I've chosen the topic which interests me, which is how to create effective teams and organizations. My goal is to know what specific factors uh, can influence our employees to become effective team players. And the research question I can formulate is, what factors contribute to creating effective teams? Very straightforward, okay? And then I conduct a review of literature. I'll probably read upon different publications related to teamwork, specifically studies focusing on what constitutes successful teams. From here, I can already have an idea of the variables I can pinpoint from those publications that have been proven to create effective teams. And now I choose my variables, okay? With all the books, scholarly articles, and research that you would have gone through, it can be determined here in this example that the three main variables are good time management, role clarity, and growth mindset, affecting the creation of effective teams. 
And here I was able to determine that these three variables are determining factors of effective teams. And then I create the conceptual framework diagram, which you can see here in, in, this, in this slide. And then I will explain everything in narrative format. Okay, maybe three or uh, three or four paragraphs explaining how good time management creates effective teams, how role clarity affects effective teams and growth mindset affect effective teams. Okay, sometimes, sometimes you can see in uh, some thesis that there is uh, another arrow coming down here. And sometimes they are called mediating uh, variables or intervening variables. Those mediating or intervening variables are not affected by the independent, but they tend to change the possible effect on the dependent variable just because these are intervening or they affect the dependent. Okay, so in which case, um, if I want to test whether uh, male employees or female employees have the same perspectives, then I can say that probably sex or uh, gender can be a intervening or mediating variable, okay? Uh, maybe educational qualification can also be uh, an intervening variable in here. And I can put that as an intervening variable and create another, another square box or a square here or an, a rectangle here and an arrow pointing to this arrow right up here, okay? So uh, this is a sample of how to create an IVDV framework. Now, as I've mentioned, there are two others. And the next one that is often, uh, you can often uh, see from researches is the IPO framework or the input process and output. Now, if you want to give emphasis to your research process, okay, your actual methodology, then the IPO model is the more appropriate uh, framework to use. So that means your focus is the process, the methodology that you have created. Okay, so sometimes, for example, some of my students create, uh, have thesis that at the end, they will be able to create a, a model or a framework itself, another framework that can explain a uh, social scenario. So that means if they want to focus on their methodology, as well as the output that they have created in the end that can be used for policymaking, then they can use input process and output. So this can be a diagram for that. Well, they can also use IVDV. So it's up to them whether they would like to focus on the interrelationship of the variables that they have tested, or they want to focus on their methodology or the process that they have undergone to create the output of their research, okay? So sometimes you can also put in the mathematical equations as part of your framework if it requires that you present the uh, model that you are being, uh, that you are testing. Next. And the final or most common of the three is a conceptual map framework. So a conceptual map is just like similar to some of the diagrams that you see when you look at a particular topic in images in Google. Okay. So the conceptual map comes in when the first two isn't enough to explain the, the many variables or the interrelationships uh, that is being tackled in your study. So a concept map helps you gain a better understanding of complex topics seeing the big picture and discovering new connections through collaborative and visual approaches. So sometimes you can use a Venn diagram here. You can use uh, 360 type of diagrams wherein uh, there is a beginning and the end and then goes back to the beginning again. So a 360 framework. You can do a um, sort of a fishtail type of, uh, of diagram or a decision tree type of diagram. Uh, it can be anything as long as it's clear that all of the variables that you've included in there are part of your study. So here is also a, uh, a, a, a sample or a, a, a five steps for drawing a concept map. First, select a drawing medium. If you want to look uh, to make it look like this or you want to use a Venn diagram for, for that matter, then it's up to you. Then establish your main concept. So here in this example, is you're looking at the impact of technology and uh, how uh, this impact of technology are affected by, no, actually not affected, but it want to, exp uh, to explore the expectations from the curriculum, learning collaboration and achievement and efficacy of the technology. If you notice, these are not uh, cause and effect uh, variables. So if this is the kind of thesis that you have, then do not do an IVDV. It should be a concept map 
like this. So identify related concepts, organize the shapes and lines, and then fine-tune the map. Okay, so here, if you follow a question type of, uh, of uh, research questions, you can actually put them in here, okay, similar to this one, okay. So hopefully, these uh, three types of framework will uh, help you out in creating your own conceptual framework. Uh, for Westme, for our school, we normally, uh, most of the thesis that... Uh, I come across with are mostly IVDD. So mostly cause and effect and correlational types of researches. And uh, for IT type of thesis, I normally would see a concept map like this. For education type of thesis, if, if uh, their uh, output is something like an action plan or a proposed uh, change or a proposed uh, learning methodology or a, a new a new a new document then I normally would see an IPO but for uh, business thesis tourism and hospitality type of thesis I normally see IV, uh, IVDB okay but of course once again it's up to you which ones you think are more appropriate to um, uh, explain your 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 study in in, in a concrete uh, visual presentation like this. Okay, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.